This lecture addresses biogeochemical cycles. While only a quick overview, it should set the stage for developing your interests in how elements move around the planet, are exchanged, and transformed. Biogeochemical cycle describe the complete path a chemical takes through the atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and biosphere. Bio involves life. Geo involves atmosphere, water, rocks, and soil, and chemical involves the chemicals that are cycled. The atmosphere, hydrosphere, lithosphere, and biosphere are depicted on the left. As a general rule, the mean residence time of the atmosphere is short, the hydrosphere is intermediate, the lithosphere is long, and the biosphere is intermediate. The diagram to the right shows a general movement of materials through each of these spheres. Unlike energy, nutrients are constantly recycled from one form to another and pass through multiple trophic levels to decomposers to abiotic forms and back to living organisms again. Nutrients move between organic and inorganic parts of the ecosystem in biogeochemical cycles. Cycles may be global or local. Nutrient cycles with the gaseous component, such as carbon, sulfur, and nitrogen, are global, whereas phosphorus, potassium, and calcium cycle more locally, at least on short timescales. Nutrients can move from one reservoir to another by a variety of processes. For example, available inorganic nutrients can become available organic nutrients by assimilation and photosynthesis. Conversely, Available organic nutrients can become available inorganic nutrients through respiration, decomposition, and excretion. Unavailable nutrients can become available from both organic sources such as oil and coal by burning fossil fuels releasing carbon dioxide, and inorganic sources by weathering and erosion of rocks. The rate at which nutrient cycle is strongly affected by the rates at which decomposers work. In the tropics, Warmer temperatures and abundant moisture cause organic material to decompose two to three times faster than it does in temperate regions. Across planet Earth, there are 103 known elements, with 92 of those occurring naturally. Nearly a quarter of the known elements, 24 elements, are required for life processes. We break down these elements required for life processes into macronutrients, in which large amounts are needed by all life, and micronutrients, in which small amounts are needed by all life, or moderate amounts are needed by some life. The six macronutrients can be recalled with the acronym CHNOPS for carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, phosphorus, and sulfur. The eight micronutrients required in small amounts by all life include calcium, copper, iron, magnesium, manganese, molybdenum, potassium, and zinc. The ten micronutrients required in moderate amounts by some life include aluminum, boron, chlorine, cobalt, fluorine, iodine, selenium, silicon, sodium, and vanadium. The table gives you an idea of how the six macronutrients are incorporated into three different organisms, a human, an alfalfa plant, and a bacterium, by weight. Perhaps surprisingly, these six macronutrients alone total over 97% of weight for each of these three organisms. Notice that the elements are listed in order of decreasing weight, with oxygen, carbon, and then hydrogen being the largest contributors for each organism. When we review the atomic composition by weight of the three representative organisms in the context of the relative abundance by weight of some chemical elements in the Earth's crust, there are a few surprises. For example, whereas oxygen, carbon, and then hydrogen were the largest contributors by weight to each organism, oxygen, silicon, and aluminum are most abundant. Carbon is listed 10th, and hydrogen is not even in the top 11 elements listed.
A chemical reaction is a process in which new chemicals are formed from elements and compounds that undergo a chemical change. In the examples given, the same compounds are inputs for the chemical reactions, that is, water, H2O, and carbon dioxide, CO2. But different reactions occur in the atmosphere, yielding a weak carbonic acid, H2CO3, and in plants, yielding glucose, C6H12O6, and oxygen, O2, through photosynthesis. The following slides will review the biogeochemical cycles of carbon, nitrogen, and phosphorus. Carbon is the fundamental building block of life and the 14th most abundant element by weight at 0.032% of total Earth mass. The carbon cycle has a gaseous phase including carbon dioxide, CO2, and methane, CH4. Carbon dioxide is taken in during photosynthesis and is respired by almost all organisms. Carbon also regulates acidity of oceans. Carbon forms the basis of all organic molecules. For example, organic chemistry is the study of carbon chemistry. Fats, sugars, DNA, proteins, etc. all contain carbon. Photosynthetic organisms take in carbon dioxide from the air and using energy from sunlight, join carbon atoms to make sugars where energy is stored in the chemical bonds. Major reservoirs of carbon include atmospheric carbon dioxide, dissolved carbon compounds in the ocean, biomass of organisms, fossil fuels, and sedimentary rocks. Photosynthesis removes large amounts of atmospheric carbon dioxide, but an approximately equal amount of carbon dioxide is returned to the atmosphere by cellular respiration. Most of the photosynthesis that occurs each year leads to the formation of tissue that is rapidly recycled, including tree leaves. There is seasonal variation in atmospheric carbon dioxide levels due to deciduous forests losing their leaves and winter senescence and there are global spatial variations in atmospheric carbon dioxide, as the northern hemisphere has a greater land mass than the southern hemisphere. The burning of fossil fuels adds a large amount of carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. Nitrogen is essential for the synthesis of proteins and DNA. While nitrogen gas, N2, is a relatively inert gas, it makes up 78% of our atmosphere by volume. Despite the relative abundance of nitrogen in the atmosphere, the nitrogen gas is inert or relatively unreactive, so nitrogen must be converted to a form available to life on the planet. Some nitrogen is fixed from the atmosphere by lightning, but most, some 90%, is fixed through biological fixation by bacteria. Nitrogen fixation is defined as converting inorganic molecular nitrogen in the atmosphere to ammonia or nitrate, which are forms available for biological uptake. The figure to the left shows the role of biota in the nitrogen cycle and presents the categories of organisms, for example, decay organisms, consumers, terrestrial and aquatic plants, nitrogen-fixing bacteria, and cyanobacteria, and the chemical forms of conversion. McKinney, Schock, and Janovec, 2007. It is nice to not only think about the global cycles and fluxes, but also the mechanisms behind each of the steps in the global nitrogen cycle. Those of you interested in the chemistry may continue your studies with the biogeochemistry course to understand these processes further. The nitrogen cycle graphic shows the global nitrogen cycle and quantifies the major storages, numbers and boxes, and major flows, numbers associated with arrows, in 10 to the 12th grams per N2. Botkin and Keller, 2007. The amount of natural global biological fixation 
140 10 to the 12th grams N2 is comparable to the amount from industrial fixation 110 to the 12th grams N2 associated with human activities. Botkin and Keller recognize that the data come from two sources published in 1982 and 1997, so it would be interesting to see the current fluxes and storages. From the global nitrogen cycle, we can also see that the largest storage of nitrogen is associated with the atmosphere, with soil organic nitrogen and land plants storing six orders of magnitude less nitrogen. Unlike carbon and nitrogen, the phosphorus cycle has no gaseous phase. Phosphorus is essential for all life and is often the limiting factor for plant production. On the other extreme, in excess, phosphorus can often cause ecological alteration and lead to changes in community structure and function. The phosphorus cycle turnover rates tend to be slow. The second image of the phosphorus cycle includes an arrow depicting inputs from agriculture, industry, and sewage. The primary natural source of phosphorus is rock, and as the rock is broken down through weathering, leaching, and mining, the phosphorus becomes available. One of the primary forms of concern in water science is phosphate, PO4-3-. Keep in mind that biogeochemical cycles vary in length of time, major storages, and mechanisms. To recap, as a general rule, the mean residence time of the atmosphere is short, the hydrosphere is intermediate, the lithosphere is long, and the biosphere is intermediate. Unlike energy, nutrients are constantly recycled from one form to another and pass through multiple trophic levels to decomposers to abiotic forms and back to living organisms again. The following references were consulted in developing this video lecture.